Hello friends and welcome back. This is the 15th week of the Play Along journal series. Um, we still have quite a few weeks to go and it has been so fun working in these two journals with you um, from beginning to end. So starting this week, I am combining the two videos into one video every week. Um, that way within one video, you can really see how I am um, using the same starting pages, kind of, the starting inspiration and how I turn um, that into two different spreads. So hopefully it will really give you some good ideas and inspiration and um, generate some um, new feelings there for you. So I'm starting out with a, a large circle cutout. Um, it's a four inch circle punch and I put that part lay off the side and why I did that is I don't always like to try to contain a shape um, into the page itself. I feel like it makes it feel too controlled and I want things to flow more freely. So in order to do that, I'd like the shapes to re remain organic and um, kind of go off the edges. I try to keep that in mind when I mark making also to not limit myself to the boundaries that are there. So actually this paper is a digital download that I printed directly onto dictionary paper. Um, so it made it really fun. Uh, the dictionary paper I had was an okay weight to put through the printer. And uh, so you get the designs of the digital download, but um, the interest of the text and stuff behind it. So that's kind of another fun technique to do with digital downloads if you're wanting another way to use them in your artwork. I'm adding in some scribbles here. And this just helps me to loosen up and get going and it adds some interest already onto the page. I want to let you know that the Virtual Art Summit is going on currently right now. And if you don't know what that is or you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to click the link in the description below. I'm going to tag that. Um, it is still ongoing. So that is a free resource. So in June, June 2nd through the 23rd, you can access lessons from 16 teachers um, all for free. Now, if you want to keep those lessons for um, lifetime access to be able to refer back and plus you'll get great bonuses and stuff as well. You can purchase the all access pass and that will be down in the description below as well. So there's some great teachers involved. I will be teaching my um, collaged art tags and I know several have commented on my videos in the past asking me how I make them. And so this is a great opportunity to learn how I make those collaged art tags and as a bonus, I will also be showing how to um, hand dye your fabrics in small batches. Um, so that's a really fun lesson. So I want to make sure that you guys don't miss out on that while the event is happening. Um, so make sure to check that out. So I did some simple outlining of the stencil shapes that were already there. And I didn't love the marks that I made on the left side of the page. And so now I'm adding in some gesso and I'm really liking the way that that's blending um, with the marker marks. Um, it was not completely dry and so the gesso kind of got grunged up a bit and I feel like it flows better with the right side of the page now. Um, it brings in those gray tones that are in that digital download and um, just makes everything a little bit more cohesive. So both of the spreads this week are a little bit um, more on the simple side, I would say, but it has been something that I've been um, challenging myself to do lately to keep things a little bit more simple. So I find it so easy to just keep adding and keep adding. And then later we look back at it and feel like it is too busy. So sometimes um, simple is better. It gives your eye a place to rest and it allows your eyes to flow across the page um, a little bit better. So simple does not necessarily me need to mean less interesting. I'm adding in some thin masking tape 
Um, just a little bit of interest. It kind of blends into the background a little bit, but it's adding in some texture and um, another neutral color in there. I want some sort of focal point um, on your on this page so that the um, the per people looking at it know kind of where your eye should go and uh, eventually land on. And it's kind of fun that masking tape that was in the background, it provides almost a base um, so that you can see the numbers that are placed on top a little bit better. I'm finishing off by adding a few art marks. And I find that this is really the stage that I can go overboard. You get so in the zone of making repetitive marks um, that it's easy to do a few too many. So I like to stop often and look back um, and see my work from afar, not so up close and personal. All right, so we're going to get started on the second spread here and we're working in our teal journal. So on this spread, I want to dive right in and get some color on this page. And one of my favorite ways to add paint is actually with my fingers. I feel like you have a lot of control of the paint and the flow of everything. So um, just taking that and really smearing that into the page with my fingers and not planning on having anything that's uh, too specific um, or any certain shape or anything like that. but kind of just starting to feel um, um, a natural way of putting that down on paper. So kind of just doing what the paint wants to do, I guess. So listening to what the page needs a little bit. Now adding in some art marks with um, my finger and some black gesso. This page ends up being uh, pretty simple in the end, but I feel like it is effective because of the layers that go into it. So we start here with the base layer of some messy paint put on the page. It looks like it was almost just smeared on um, randomly and then go into adding some scribble marks. I love scribble marks because they really loosen you up. Plus, I love the look of them. I feel like it kind of looks like the thread does up at the top. All of those loose threads, it kind of looks like the scribble marks on the page. And this all just helps you to create more organically and to get into the flow of creation. Since I know that this page is going to stay relatively simple, I know that I want some sort of major focal point. And um, I think this really helps on the simpler pages to add that degree of interest. So I'm taking these little thin wooden numbers. I believe I got them at the dollar store. Um, and I saw them, I thought that would be so fun to be able to paint them um, and use them in art journals too, because it adds texture, it adds dimension without them being too thick, um, that it doesn't interfere with the overall art journal. So I took my finger in some white gesso and scribbled um, or got those all um, white with gesso, but I wanted it to be kind of imperfect. And that's why I didn't use a paintbrush or anything like that. I just wanted it to basically cover the number, but um, still see through a little bit. I was okay with that. That's a um, Stabilo All Pencil that I added to the sides. I probably should have let the paint dry a little bit more before bringing my damp paintbrush in. Um, so it's definitely mixing with the white more than I intended from the beginning. But I'm actually really enjoying the like ghostly gray that's added. And now with the extra pigment that's on my already damp brush, I'm actually bringing in that gray color to the journal spread itself. And so I think this will really tie everything together, the gray of the numbers, but then also just a little touch of gray on the page as well. So since that color did turn out more gray than I originally planned, I'm going to bring my pen, my black bold pen, and add a few little black art marks on top of it. Um, and I'm actually going in the parts that I already kind of darkened, giving myself a baseline, um, a little bit of guide, some borders to 
kind of stick within. I don't want it to be perfect by any means. Um, but just like I did on the left side of the page there, I did those vertical lines and I really enjoy the look that it looks when you do art marks inside of like a splotched paint area. I'm using my hot glue gun to put these numbers down. It's kind of a funny story. I have almost never had a hot glue gun in my life and I am so artistic and do so many crafts that it's always been kind of like a funny thing that I haven't had a hot glue gun. Um, but I saw this one and it is cordless, which is kind of awesome. So if you're doing a lot of like hot glue crafting, I don't think you would enjoy it because, um, maybe it's not powerful enough, but I've really been noticing that inside my art journal and different art journaling things and with mixed media and creating little fabric clusters or um, bead clusters, all these different things, it's kind of nice to have that hot glue gun that it heats up within like 30 seconds. And um, as I said, it's cordless. So that's kind of nice. So I don't think that you need to go buy one if you already have a working glue gun, but if you're in the market for one, I will link that below as well as all the other supplies that I use um, to make these spreads. If I know where it's from, I will try to link that for you. I added just a little bit of texture collage onto the left side with drywall tape, and I think that rounds me out for these two journal spreads. I hope that you guys loved watching, and I hope that you're playing along. I will see you next week for another video. Have a good one.